your Shadow Mountain Australian Labradoodle Puppy Goes Home, you will receive a Go Home packet. In that packet will be information for your vet as well as the Go Home schedule that we recommend that you follow for at least 14 days to help the puppy transfer easily. The first thing you'll receive is the Shadow Mountain Health Record that shows the shots, the dewarming, and the microchip information. The puppy's birth date, um, their, their color when they were here and the color, the microchip number, the dates that they were dewormed, and the results of their fecal test. In addition, we uh, give the puppies um, vaccinations while they're here. The Intratrac 3 is a nasal vaccine for kennel cough. And then for the Parvo and Distemper shots, we use a product called Neopar and Neodac. This is a specially formulated vaccine for nursing puppies. Your vet may not be familiar with this vaccine as it is different than what's available at the vet. The main reason that it's different is that it's um, manufactured to start being given at five weeks of age to give your puppy maximum coverage. The majority of shots that vets use don't start until eight weeks of age because most people don't take a puppy in until they're eight weeks of age. So be sure to read the information that we provide regarding um, this vaccine. And if you have any further questions or your vet does, there is, um, here's the schedule that we followed and there's also, I'll turn it this way, there's a schedule that we followed and also the telephone number and they do have a vet on staff to answer any of your questions. Not only is this a better product because it gives the puppy coverage starting at five weeks of age, it splits the vaccine up. So while a regular vaccine has four or five vaccines in one, which can really take a toll on a young puppy's system, this vaccine is split into individual diseases that are covered. So, so um, it's less harsh on the system and less likely to have a reaction. The puppy can go onto your vet's vaccine. They can transfer right over and pick up where the schedule left off. Anything that's blue, for example, on this one, this puppy still needs a shot at 14 weeks of age. So you'll see the stickers and anything that's blank, you'll need to continue with that. Keep in mind that in Southern California especially, we are trying to fight parvo, trying to fight against parvo. Parvo is a deadly disease that, um, that is contracted on public surfaces through feces matter. Um, so your puppy should not be on any public surface and should not be in contact or playing with other dogs until they have received their final parvo shot at 14 weeks of age. This means not in your front yard if dogs are able to come into your yard, not on your cul-de-sac, not walking in the vet, vet's office. The puppy needs to be up off the ground and for example when you go into the pet's, vet's office we recommend that you take them in your plastic crate and do not allow people to touch them when you're in the vet's office. Sick puppies go to the vet's office. Um, you can take your puppy out and socialize, go for a walk, but carry your puppy. Do not allow your puppy to touch the ground in public surfaces until they have completed their shot series. It could cost them their life. Okay, in addition to the, the vet information there, um, as I mentioned, the puppy is microchipped. A microchip is not a tracking system. It is just a way to store information regarding the puppy's owner. The chip is inserted in between the shoulder blades and it can move. It is about the size of a piece of long grain rice. So if you're petting your puppy and you feel this hard thing under the surface of their skin and it's this, about the size of a long grain rice, it is the microchip. Microchips can expel themselves just like a splinter. So it's important to have your vet check the microchip and make sure it's still in place every time you go to the vet. On your first visit when you go to the vet, which as you know, you're required to do within 72 hours of taking the puppy home, on your first visit, you'll have the, pup, the vet scan and make sure that the microchip is there and working. Then you will complete this form for home again pet recovery. You'll fill out your information and we recommend that your alternate contact is not someone who normally travels with you or goes to the movies with you. 
someone who, if you're away and unavailable, they can still reach them. What happens is the puppy is picked up hopefully by an honest person and taken to an animal shelter or into a vet's office. The number is scanned and they contact Home Again Pet Recovery and your information is there on file and they will contact you. This is a nationwide company and they are dealing with all of these numbers. We strongly suggest that two weeks after you submit the form, you follow up with them and make sure that one, it has been transferred into your name and two, that there are no typos. We did have a family that ran into a problem with typos and they went through five hours of a lot of fear when, um, when they had turned in the form and the company had made a mistake. I have paid for this service, so you do not need to pay anything additional. Home Again does offer other services that you are welcome to look into. I really don't have an opinion on those, but you do not owe them any money when you send this in. Also, while you're at your vets, you're going to have them complete the same wellness puppy form that we had our vet complete. I'll put it down here. And that will need to be returned to us within four days. So you need to take, go to the puppy, take the puppy to the vet within three days and the form needs to be back to us within four days. If you don't have a scanner, you're welcome to take a photograph of it on your phone and email it to me. But it's really important that we have this. I will be sending along with this video that you're receiving your contract. Please complete it and return it along with your payment when you come to pick up your puppy. If the puppy is being delivered, payment is due prior to the puppy leaving the property. If it's out of state, if the puppy is being delivered um, in person, payment can be uh, made at that time. And we do need the contract completed. Now for the schedule, everybody's questions about what are we going to do with this new puppy. If the puppy was in their extended stay program, the expectation is that they will get up about 6 o'clock in the morning. They will um, get up around 6, you will immediately carry the puppy outside to go to the bathroom, and this is a high energy time. They've literally been locked up for several hours. So take your coffee, go outside, and enjoy your morning with your puppy. Let me say first of all, though, before we get into the rest of this, that it, it takes a puppy a full 14 days to transfer from one loving home to another loving home. Each day they become more confident, they learn the schedule at your house, the routine, even the smells and sounds at your house are different. So remember to be patient with your puppy and to be very, very consistent. Um, that said, we suggest that you do not allow your puppy to walk around on your floors until they have been home for two weeks. What that means is the puppy will play with you outside. They can be held in your lap while you're watching a movie or reading a book or just chatting, but they are not wandering around your house. If they wander around in your house, they will potty, which confuses them because the, the natural instinct of a puppy at this age, there's two things going on. One is that the puppy wants to return to the same place to go potty. So if you let them run around in your living room and they potty, then they are going to have a split instinct of, I want to return to here or do I want to go back outside? We want to reinforce that they need to go back to the same place and we want to be a place that you've chosen, not that they've chosen. The other thing that's happening with a puppy at this age is they want to leave the nest to go to the bathroom. So if you think about when they're little, really little, they're born into a little nest with their moms. And at first their moms clean them up. And then after a few weeks, they start to actually leave the nest, step a couple of inches uh, away and potty outside the nest. Right now, the puppy's nest is the size of their crate, no bigger. It is not the size of your kitchen and certainly not the size of your whole house. There is no way that your puppy at this age can conceive that your whole house is the nest. So what we do is we help the puppy be successful by not letting him run around the house so he's not having accidents in the house and allowing him the time to mature physically and mentally enough to come to the understanding that your whole house is the nest. Potty training takes a little time, but it does not need to be frustrating for you and it doesn't need to be confusing for the puppy. So that said, let's go on with this. So the puppy gets up at 6 a.m. 
take them outside to go potty, um, spend a little time with them running around, and then 15 to 30 minutes later, give him his breakfast. We are going to strongly suggest that you do not feed him immediately. They don't understand time, but they understand routine. So if you teach them that you are gonna feed them as soon as they get up, as they grow and have growing spurts, they'll get up earlier and earlier because they're hungry. Sorry, her photographer sneezed. Okay, so then at about 6.15, you're gonna give them breakfast. We're gonna suggest that you give it to them in the wire crate that is located in a central location in your home. Um, you can start with approximately three quarters of a cup. The puppies eat at a group table here or a group bowl, so we do not know exactly how much your puppy eats. Um, it's okay if they eat a little less, and if they need a little more, just give them a little bit more. You're feeding them the high quality food that we've suggested, so you don't have to worry about them overeating, but we definitely wanna make sure that they get enough. Offer the food for about 10 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Offer the food for about 10 minutes, and um, once they're finished, either the bowl's empty or they've lost interest, you can take that bowl out and you can take them back outside again to go potty um, and for more playtime. <coughs> Excuse me. While you're outside playing with them, you can break into four pieces the new vet vitamin that you've bought for them, the supplement, and you can offer them that as a treat. We want to make sure that it's fed about the same time that they're eating so it's not given to them on an empty stomach. It does have chicken liver in it, so it is a very interesting treat. And so as they become adults, it's important to keep the container put away. It won't hurt them, but they will eat your whole $50 worth of supplements in one setting if they get a hold of the bottle. Um, okay, so they've gone outside, they've had breakfast, they've gone back outside, and then your life starts um, for the day. So between 7 and 11.30, the puppy is going to be in a routine of being in the wire crate, going outside to go potty, um, then having a little recess with you. Recess is interactive. We don't put the puppy outside and leave them by themselves any more than we would put a toddler outside and leave them by themselves. After you've had a recess with them, you'll be able to tell when it's time for them to come in. They'll start to slow down. Um, they can, you can ask them to go potty again, take them back to the spot that you want them to go, and then return them to their wire crate in the house. When you are working with them in the house, go ahead and put them in their crate. If they start to protest, abruptly pull the sheet down and walk away, I'd say quiet in the deepest voice that you can muster, and walk away and let them work it out. If they become quiet, then go ahead and leave the sheet down until the next time. During the day in the morning, depending on what age your puppy is when they go home, the nine week old puppies can um, be in the crate for about an hour or so and then they need to go out to the bathroom. You don't need to wake them to take them out, but plan to be around enough where you can take them out about every hour, hour and a half. The 11 week old puppies that have been in extended stay can go a little bit longer. Um, so you're going to take them outside and then come back in. You should expect to have at least two times that they're in the crate in the morning. Then lunchtime is about 11.30. We only served lunch for the first week. And um, that is just to help the puppy transition and make sure that they are not, they are not full. Or excuse me, they're not hungry. And then in the afternoon, they'll have another recess or two, run around, have some time. This is a good time during these recesses to do a little five minute training, working on sit, um, and as you, you know, sit and then loose leash walking and so on. It's great for physical um, exercise as well as the little training bouts is good mental exercise that really wears them out. Then in the afternoon, we call that nap time, and that's an opportunity for your puppy to be in your bedroom, in the plastic crate that we are providing to you. They will, this crate will last them only a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, just at the time to really help them transition into your home and get them sleeping through the night. Even the puppies that are in extended stay should sleep in your room for the first two weeks to bond with you and be part of your, um, of your pack. So, but this plastic crate is in your bedroom and in the afternoon, we're going to suggest that you put the puppy down for a nap all by themselves in your bedroom. 
The purpose of having the two crates is, one, the play crate allows the puppy to be part of the family, to be in a central location, but they are safe and they're not prodding all over your house. Um, it teaches them to self-entertain and to learn how to behave appropriately in a home. They're not jumping off the furniture any more than a child plays soccer in the living room. Um, they learn to come in, say hello, and then lay down and self-entertain. Um, nap time in the afternoon in the plastic crate teaches them to be totally alone. And the puppies need, they have been born in a group and we pull them out for short times here at our house. But the puppy will need to learn to be alone now so that you don't have separation and anxiety later. So put them in a room where no one else is around, close the door, and let them have some time to themselves. Um, again, the puppies that are going home at 11 weeks, you're looking at probably an hour and a half to two hours. The extended stay puppies should be able to stay in there a little longer. Um, we do not tell time, you know, we don't look at our watch more. We look at, did the puppy go in peacefully? If the puppy went in peacefully, and then is saying in an hour and a half later that they're barking, then they need to go out to go to the bathroom. If the puppy did not go in peacefully and they are barking and barking, um, that is not necessarily, we're not gonna wait an hour and a half to take them out. If they are really protesting and it's going on 10, 15, 20 minutes, what we're gonna suggest, because we don't wanna get in the habit of barking and barking, also, they don't have a they don't have a diaper on, so we don't want them to be so hysterical that they wet their bed. So that said, if your puppy is protesting for quite some time, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to shake some keys, something that has a completely different sound. Drop some keys by their bed, shake them, something that makes a completely different sound. And in that moment, when your puppy takes a breath, you can open the crate, say good potty, and take them out, I mean good quiet and take them outside to try to get them to go potty. Give them a little five minute break, go potty, and then go back in and try again. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we've gone through nap time and uh, they're getting up again sometime between 3.30 and 4.30, depending on how long they were able to sleep. You'll have some more family time, a little recess, and then serve dinner around five o'clock. Um, at five o'clock, we want to try to serve dinner so that there's plenty of time for the food to be eliminated before bedtime. Same routine, food in the crate, approximately 10 minutes, and then uh, remove it. And for the first two weeks, we're going to suggest that you give them an ad additional NuVet supplement at that time. Um, your puppy's immune system is going to be really stressed during this transfer. So the NuVet Plus helps, among many things, it helps with handling the stress and building the immune system and supporting the immune system during this, um, this life change for them. So after dinner, then between five and nine, you're gonna be back to the wire crate. And this is family time. So of course, people are gonna be wanting to spend a lot of time with the puppy. But it is important, even the first night, that the puppy spends some time in the wire crate. It is important also that when the puppies are in the crate, they are left alone. No eye contact, no talking. It is really important that they are left to entertain themselves. If you start talking to them through the crate and people are giving them a lot of attention, you're going to have protesting and the puppy is gonna be fighting being in the crate. So stick with that. If you're watching a movie, you're having family time, you certainly can hold the puppy for a while. We just don't want them walking around your house. Um, then in around, okay, so at 9.30 approximately, you're going to take your puppy outside for recess. It's important that you give the opportunity to the puppy to run around and get the whole system moving so we can eliminate as much as possible. Remember that your puppy does not tinkle and poo at the same time. So just because you see they'll do the little curtsy, they're not done. Um, and then after... 15 minutes of rinsing around, you'll, you'll get the idea of when they're tired. Um, then you can put them down at approximately 10 p.m. Puppies that have been in extended stay most likely will sleep from 10 until 5.30 to 6 the next morning. If your puppy does wake and you hear them crying, take them outside to go to the bathroom. They're going to be in the crate in your bedroom. If you wake and you hear the puppy rolling around 
growling, chewing on their hooks, they are learning to put themselves back to sleep. Do not disturb them. They will go back to sleep. So just remember that you do not need to sleep with one ear open. If they need to go out, they'll let you know. Um, the, the sleep crate that we send home lasts for, they're, they're in about two to three weeks because by then they've outgrown it, um, really more mentally outgrown it than physically. And then they can just start sleeping in the wire crate in, the, in your central location. If you find that you really want the puppy to sleep in your room, then you'll want to get a second crate for that bedroom that's bigger. The crate that we're sending home is just the right size for this special time of transition to make sure that it's not too big so the puppy goes in the back and goes potty. Um, and as I said, that crate can be used also when you take the puppy to the vet. When you carry the crate, be sure that you're carrying it like this rather than by the handle. We do not want the puppy to his little face to be, the puppy to be sliding around and the little face to be hitting that, that wire gate that will not promote the crate being a happy, fun place to be. Okay, just some little tips. We always give the puppy a treat when they go into the crate. We are very, very consistent with pulling down the sheet. Um, you will find that it, at some point the puppy will get it. You'll be able to almost see it happen where they us often hear them go, uh. What we're doing is we're teaching them that when you bark, the response that you get is not attention. You get cut off from everything that's happening. These are smart dogs, they're social dogs, and they want to be part of what's happening. So very quickly, they get the idea. So it's important to act quickly when they start to bark. Don't let them bark for five minutes and then pull the sheet down. They won't understand the correction. Some other things to keep in mind are um, that you really need to start working with the trainer as soon as possible. This week is, is, is okay. It's important that you are trained on how to work with the puppy. Body language with this breed, because it's such a soft and gentle, sensitive breed, is really important. And having a positive reinforcement trainer come in and help you and your family all get on the same page in working with the puppy will pay off. The longer you take to do that, the more you'll have to backtrack and relearn things. This is a really important time, these 14 days. So set yourself and your puppy up by getting um, working with a trainer. We are happy to answer questions. If you would like to email us the first couple of days and let us know how things are going, we'd love to hear from you. If you are having any questions about the schedule, be very specific. We put the puppy down at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. and he barked for 20 minutes and this is how we handled it. Um, be very specific. If your puppy is not enrolled in extended stay, you need to expect to be up every couple of hours sleep up before you come to get the puppy because you will be up for several nights. Um, it's totally doable, and um, but just be aware that you're going to be up quite a bit. And it's a good idea to prep your family, possibly even send the kids away because they're concerned about the puppy crying. All right, so this is a lot of information, but we want you to be able to focus on your puppy when you come tomorrow. So we will have you sign the contract that we've sent you a copy of. We will um, give you your folder. We will give you your sleep crate, the little plastic crate. The puppies will have a little stuffed animal that they take home that has the scent of everyone, and they will have their hoof. Um, it's important that um, the puppy ride in the crate unless they have the opportunity to ride in someone's lap. There's tons more you could move in and I could teach you lots of things, but this will give you a good start. Thank you for giving your Shadow Mountain Labradoodle a wonderful life.